Welcome to uh, Crystal Primer Part 2. In Part 1, we uh, derived the uh, impedance equation of the crystal resonator, whose symbol is up here. And um, we also showed the equivalent circuit, the one port single mode, where these three elements here are the motional arm, and these are the complex impedance of uh, C0, for example, is 1 over J omega C0. Um, what we want to do in this session is to um, plot the imaginary portion of the crystal impedance, which is called the reactance. So I will do that down here, and from that we're going to gather a lot of information that is useful to understanding a crystal resonator. Uh, let's pick a color. We don't have a color here. It's, uh, okay, got a color. Let's see. So... Uh, not too straight, but it's okay. Let's plot frequency in this direction. This will be plus J, minus J. Okay. So th this is the real axis here. This is inductive region. This is capacitive region. So the reactance of the crystal looks something like this. Like that. And so point of interest over here that we are going to do, um, very important point is this point right here. And this point is FS. That's a series resonance frequency of the crystal. And that occurs where L1 resonates with C1 and really cancel each other out and you're left with just R1 and parallel with a small capacitance like C0 which is usually 7 puff max. So because of that it's actually there's more than one series frequency which is we're not going to discuss just enough to know FS is where C1 cancels out L1. And that frequency is Fs is equal to 1 over 2 pi, the square root of L1, C1. Now the important point here is this one here, and this is Fa. So this is the anti-resonance frequency at this point here, and that occurs when L1 resonates with the parallel combination of C1 and C0. So Fa is equal to 1 over 2 pi L1 C0 times C1 over C0 plus C1. This area here is inductive. So we can represent this plus J here as an inductive region. Minus J, as you recall, is a capacitive region, so we could put a capacitor here as a symbol to, so we could see that more clearly. Uh, this area here is called area of parallel resonance. Area of parallel resonance. I'm going to fit that. So it's the area of parallel resonance. And most oscillators actually operate the crystal in this region. It's an inductive region, and like the typical Pierce gate oscillator, uh, which we'll have modules later on, will show that operates the crystal in this region. And a lot of oscillators do operate also at series resonance, which is this point. Now, the so-called series crystal uh, is a crystal that 
we will calibrate the frequency if it's 20 megahertz and we call it a series crystal it's actually the the 20 megahertz will be at this point if it's a so-called a parallel crystal uh, it will be somewhere calibrated at this point but physically there is no difference between a series crystal and a parallel crystal another thing we can do is um, what happens to the frequency as we add a capacitor in series with the crystal so we let's add a capacitor in series with the crystal right here a CL now as that's changed the capacitor we can this is a nice equation that you should memorize uh, for that and so if we got a frequency FL somewhere here. We're going to reference it to this frequency FS. So FL minus FS over FS, which is the same as saying delta F over FS. This is called a fractional frequency, just a fancy word for, for what that is is equal to C1 over 2 times CL plus C0 times 10 to the 6. 10 to the 6 changes that fraction of frequency to ppm. So this is in ppm. And this is called the pooling equation. Pooling equation. In the next section, uh, the next slide, we will um, actually show some plots of this, what's called the pooling equation. So to summarize over here, we have the impedance equation of the crystal. We have its equivalent circuit, single mode, because we're only showing right now one response. So this is one response. We could add more responses, we'll, and we will later on. We plotted here the reactance, which is the imaginary portion. So you see this uh, in a lot of uh, articles, theoretical articles and books, and maybe you don't know where it came from, but that's what it is. It's the imaginary portion of the um, equivalent circuit. And now also knowing that, if you know that this looks capacitive and this looks inductive, it should be very trivial to know what the phase of this equivalent circuit is. We can plot actually the phase of this equivalent circuit and we'll do that. Let's pick another color here. Let me pick yellow. It's uh, easy to see. Um, and let's say this is minus 90 over here and let's put plus plus 90 over here So we know that the uh, phase of a capacitor, so this capacitive, is minus 90. Once it passes through resonance over here, it becomes plus 90. And again, another capacitor becomes minus 90. It looks like a pulse, and this is the phase of the crystal resonator. Very simple, right? Minus 90 because of capacitor plus 90, and that's exactly how that looks like. In the next section, we'll, uh, we'll take that capacitor, that's low capacitance, and we'll actually vary it from one load to the other and see how um, we can figure out, uh, knowing the motion of parameters, how many ppm is pulled. Until next time.